If you take a look back at how our ancestors lived, it's fair to say that, by comparison, we've got it pretty easy. Thanks to modern technology, it's now easier than ever to cook meals, clean our homes, work, communicate with others, and entertain ourselves. Heck, thanks to the magic of the internet, you need never leave your house if you don't want to. With that said though, sometimes we can't help but look to our favourite video games and wonder just how much simpler things could be if we had access to all of the weird and wonderful items that have been dreamt up by devs over the years. For this list then, we've taken a look back through the archives of gaming history to uncover the items that we think could vastly improve our lives. It doesn't matter if they're magical or just really technologically advanced, if we think they'd make our day-to-day -day responsibilities less complicated, then they are most welcome here. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game items that would make our lives so much easier. Number 10. Hookshot, The Legend of Zelda series Ladders. What a pain in the bum they are. Sadly, if you've got some work that needs doing in a high place, they're pretty much the only option you've got. That is, of course, unless you're Link of the Legend of Zelda fame, in which case you can solve any high ground issue with your handy dandy hookshot. Players first encounter the hookshot in The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, where it can be found hiding in the Swamp Palace. Since then, it's made appearances in a number of Zelda titles, including Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask, and it has gotten our boy out of a number of sticky situations. The primary function of the hookshot is to allow Link to grapple onto faraway surfaces so he can reach previously inaccessible areas, and he needs simply latch it onto a sturdy object in order to be propelled towards it. Its applications don't end there though, as the hookshot can also be used to retrieve hard-to-reach items and rupees, attack enemies, and even activate switches. You know what that means? No more getting out of bed when you're comfy because you've forgotten to turn off the light. Number 9. Return Scepter, Stardew Valley Picture the scene. You've gone out for a few drinks after work, and when it's time to say goodbye, you pull up your taxi summoning app and- What's this? Surge pricing? Not to worry though, because you've got your return scepter. So all you need to do is raise it skywards, and you're on your doorstep in no time. Indeed, one of the most useful items in all of Stardew Valley is the return scepter, a golden staff topped with a purple gem that will return the wielder home when they raise it above their head. Obtaining it is a bit of a nightmare though, as there's a ton of stuff that the player must do before the option to purchase it even becomes available. If you do want to get your hands on this highly useful stick, you'll need to donate 60 unique items to the museum, which means a heck of a lot of mining and fishing for interesting stuff. And only then will you be allowed into the sewers to buy the scepter from Krobus. I hope you've been saving though, because it costs no less than 2 million gold. Christ, how many parsnips do I have to sell to a crew that much? Hang on. 57,000? Sod it, I'll walk. Number 8. Stimpax, the Fallout series. Modern medicine is a marvel of science, but as anyone who's ever tried waiting in A&E will tell you, unless you're on the brink of death, it can often take a while to get medical attention. What would be really handy then is if there was some sort of fix-all cure that could be administered at home in less time than it even takes to ring 111. Now we're not saying we'd like to live in the Fallout universe, after all we can't imagine it's too much fun trying to survive in a nuclear wasteland, but it's hard to deny that there are some items, namely stim packs, that would be massively useful. First making their appearance in Fallout 1, these futuristic wonders are typically syringes filled with a mixture of healing agents and stimulants, which, when injected, boost the user's natural regenerative functions. What that means in practice is that any injury that might befall you whilst wandering a post-apocalyptic hellscape will be healed in a jiffy. Cuts, scrapes, burns, and breaks are no longer an issue if you have a stim pack in your bag. And let's face it, with all of the ghouls and mutants milling around, you're probably going to need a few of them. Number 7. Redstone. Minecraft. Owing to humanity's reliance on fossil fuels over the past several hundred years, it's fair to say that the planet is in a bit of a pickle, and we're now in a position where we need to find renewable alternatives for energy or face dooming the world. But what if there were a power source out there that was infinite and able to produce a whole load of clean energy whilst taking up barely any space? 
Well, if you live in the world of Minecraft, there is. And it's not all that difficult to get your hands on. Indeed, residents of the Minecraft universe can power pretty much anything thanks to redstone. Obtained by taking that pickaxe for a day out in one of the game's many mines, redstone allows you to create all kinds of weird and wonderful powered contraptions. Perhaps you're looking to beef up your home security after one too many creeper attacks. With redstone, you can. Simply craft yourself an iron door, then hook it up to a lever or button, et voila! No more home invasions. Or maybe you're sick of your neighbours rifling through your chests. Well, my good sir, or madam, or other. All you need to do is craft yourself a trapped chest and connect it to some TNT. Ho oh, ho, that'll surely learn them. Number six, Omni Tools, the Mass Effect series. Invented in the late 1800s, the Swiss Army Knife is a miracle of engineering, allowing its owners to carry around everything from corkscrews to wood saws to toothpicks in their pockets. Sadly though, their functions are limited to non-electronic tasks, so if you're in desperate need of assistance of the digital variety, you're plops out of luck. Fortunately for them though, the good folks living in the Mass Effect universe get to make use of Omni Tools, handy devices with all sorts of applications. Appearing throughout the series, Omni Tools are able to perform a number of different tasks and can function as a torch, scanner, camera, and communication device, plus they're able to repair items, dispense medigel, assist the wearer with hacking, and much, much more. But Peter, I hear you cry, what about if I'm being attacked by hordes of geth? I don't think shining a torch at them will do much good, will it? Fear not, young grasshopper, because the Omni Tool can also function as a weapon, and is able to perform different attacks depending on your class. Soldiers and infiltrators get to utilize the Omni Blade, and engineers get a little incendiary oomph added to their backhand. No matter the issue, your Omni Tool has you covered. Number five, Bag of Holding, the Baldur's Gate series. Now, before anyone starts, yes, we know that the Bag of Holding technically originates from Dungeons and Dragons, but the rules for the D&D bag are slightly different to those for the Baldur's Gate bag, so we're giving it a pass. Originally developed by Bioware, the Baldur's Gate series takes place in the Forgotten Realms D&D setting and is full to the brim with magical items. One of the most useful is the Bag of Holding which makes its first appearance in Siege of Dragonspear, the 2016 DLC for Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. It also shows up in Baldur's Gate 2 in multiple places, including Dragomir's Tomb. There, it's revealed that the powerful vampire Dragomir the Warlord has been using it to carry around his coffin so he doesn't have to traipse back to his castle to regenerate every time he falls in battle. Clever. But what's so great about this bag, you may ask? Well, not only can the bag of holding carry up to 100 items, but because it's magical, it never weighs more than 5 pounds, or 2.26796 kilos if you want to get metric about this, meaning you could stick 100 grand pianos in it, and it'd still only weigh as much as a small cat. Number 4. Cosmic Forge, Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge. Strap in, boys and girls, because it's time to head all the way back to 1990 as we look at Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge, or more specifically, the Cosmic Forge itself. The game follows a party of adventurers as they explore the land, trying to find out what happened to the king, queen, and wizard that once inhabited the castle, which allegedly holds the Cosmic Forge, a pen that's able to control the destiny of time and space. Anything written by the pen becomes instantly true, so whoever holds it can effectively shape the world however they like. Guess who's never gonna run out of Oreos ever again? This guy. It is worth noting, though, that you Using it outside of the cosmic circle does cause the writer to suffer its bane, capital B, i.e. the forge will twist whatever they've written in order to mock them. As an example, the evil queen uses it to write the death of the witch, meaning the king's lover Rebecca, but the pen instead interprets the witch to be the queen herself. Ouch. However, as long as you've got one of those cosmic circle thingies, I'm sure there's no way that anything could go wrong. And they probably sell them on Amazon or something, right? Cosmic circle? Can someone check that, please? Number three, Dagger of Time, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. 
At some point or another, we've all wished that we had the power to turn back time. Whether we've said something stupid that we've instantly regretted, or just wished that we could snooze a little longer in the mornings, there are definitely a lot of pros to being able to roll back the clock. If only we had the Dagger of Time. The dagger first makes its appearance in Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, where the titular prince loots it from the palace of a local Maharaja after being tricked into stealing the titular Sands of Time for the vizier. After obtaining the sands, the vizier uses them to turn everyone into horrific monsters, and it's up to our favourite nameless prince to put an end to his dastardly schemes. Throughout the game, the prince is able to use the dagger to rewind time up to 10 seconds, allowing him to reverse potentially game-ending mistakes, meaning no more platforming slip-ups. It can also slow time for those around him, making combat much easier, or freeze his enemies entirely for those times when he's a little overwhelmed and doesn't feel like breaking a sweat. Be careful not to use it too much though, because you wouldn't want to invoke the wrath of this guy. Number 2. Gravity Gloves – Half-Life Alex. Have you ever sat down on the sofa only to realise the TV remote is on the other side of the room? Huh, annoying right? It's really hard being privileged. But what if you had gloves that could summon items to you from a distance? Why, you'd never find yourself in that kind of predicament ever again! We toyed with the idea of putting the gravity gun from Half-Life 2 on this list, but why would you want to lug that old thing around when you could instead have the gravity gloves from Half-Life? Half-Life Alex. They do the exact same job, but are a fraction of the size. And you know us, we like tiny things here at Team Triple Jump. The gravity gloves are created by Russell, who gives them to Alex after freeing her from the clutches of the Combine. They may not be much to look at, but the gloves allow Alex to pull distant objects towards her, meaning she can summon everything from ammo to gas canisters, which can promptly be lobbed at enemies. They also help Alex keep track of her ammo if she's wielding a gun, and inform her if her health is getting low. It's basically like having a smartwatch that can summon you a beer, tell you how much of your beer is left throughout the evening, and then tell you how unhealthy it is to be drinking that beer. Which is, let's face it, the dream. And number 1. Aperture Science Handheld Portal Device, aka The Portal Gun, The Portal Series. Oh come on, what other video game item could have possibly taken the number one spot on this list besides the portal gun? First appearing in the 2007 puzzler Portal, the Aperture Science handheld portal device is an item that can fire two interconnected portals, one blue and one orange, that allow both objects and people to pass between two points in space instantaneously. This proves particularly useful for protagonist Chell, who makes her way through the Aperture Science Enrichment Center, using it to solve the puzzles within each chamber. She's able to reach otherwise inaccessible areas, redirect projectiles, and maneuver her trusty companion cube into place. In fact, just about the only thing the portal gun can't do is, well, fire bullets, but also heal the emotional trauma from having to euthanize that trusty companion cube. Indeed, within the walls of the Aperture Science testing facility, the portal gun is an incredibly useful device, but just think of the applications it could have in the outside world. Whatever problem you have, there's a portal for it. Although you would have to coat almost everything in that moon dust paint, and that caused Cave Johnson's fatal illness, didn't it? Maybe this is… this is a bad idea.